Welcome back to a video where it is just you and me and I really wanted to, I know that sounds weird, but I wanted you to get to know me more because I've made a lot of documentaries, I've made a lot of projects and books and yet I still feel there are some things that you've kept asking me that I purposefully haven't answered because there's just too much of a long explanation to put that in a comment. So here goes. Eee. Firstly, my Patreons will get the first choice of question and that is because I'm very, very uh, emotional when I talk about them. I'm really happy that my Patreon has been working out so well. It's something that I didn't know would take off or not and um, it means a lot because I actually haven't been paid for anything I've ever done here on YouTube at all. So that includes the television series I made, which I know you'd expect, oh yeah, of course you'd get money for that. Um, and I, I really do, I hate being open about money, but I think it's something I need to be honest about because I'm so grateful that my patrons have given me a chance to start to actually earn money from what I do. And, and that, that means a lot. <laughs> so I've got my Patreon in front of me now, and Daniel Peterson. Uh, by the way, please do excuse me if I don't pronounce your names correctly. But Daniel Peterson asks, uh, it seems that, oh goodness, my voice, oh no. It seems that you love, uh, you have a love of geology as well as caving. Are those two things tied together for most cavers or can you enjoy spending time in caves without really caring about all the high, whys and hows of everything. Uh, what a great question. You never have to understand anything about caves to go inside a cave. That's really important because some people cave for the reason that they like being with their friends in an environment that is quite challenging. And so you need that teamwork to work together and have build a better, stronger friendship. I know a lot of people that do that and that is perfect and amazing in its own right. For me, I think that most people, when they start caving for years on end, they actually, people tend to have um, a love of geology that just comes with it, you know? You start going in this area for a long amount of time and you do gather an interest in geology. That happens naturally, I think. They also ask, I'd be interested in knowing how you find new caves. I can imagine that tribal knowledge would be important, but has that all been digitalized and made accessible online? Or does it still pay off to know where to find the local cavers and ask? You've kind of answered your own question in the fact that they have pretty much all been digitalized in the UK, um, but it, it's amazing to get to know cavers. I mean, there are roughly, I think there are around 4,000 cavers in the country the last time I checked, not that I counted them all, uh, but they are all logged into the British Caving Association because we all need a bit of insurance. <laughs> a bit of insurance. Um, they've also said, Daniel has also said that he has ordered a copy of The Fragile Cave, which is the book I wrote in the pandemic. So um, that means a lot to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. That's, I, I really hope you enjoy it, honestly, uh, from my heart there. Cheers Steak asks, I have been fortunate to encounter people with unique last names, usually Native Americans, such as Big Mountain, or Running Bear. By the way, they are beautiful names. Um, would you be willing to explain the origin of your last name? Uh, thank you for asking this question. A lot of people have been saying that my last name isn't real and it's fake and that I made it up and um, I should stop making things up. <laughs> so my name is 100% real. Um, I was born with this name and I decided to keep it. And a lot of people did say that I should change my name. Uh, when I was going out into the world um, to be seen more seriously, but I, I adore my name too much to change it. And that's something I wanted to stay authentic to myself. Um, I am Elise Freshwater Blizzard and that's part of me. Uh, Freshwater Blizzard is a, a double barrel name that's hyphenated. Unfortunately, you can't get hyphenation on YouTube names, but Freshwater came from 
my mother's side of the family and Blizzard came from my father's side of the family and it is literally a story that you would expect. Somebody named Mr. Blizzard met Mr. Freshwater. So what they did is they came to the conclusion that uh, everyone, uh, my sister and I basically, uh, everyone from this generation downwards would be Freshwater and Blizzard together, which I think is um, a beautiful way to um, deal with the name situation. <laughs> <clears throat> Cheesesteak also asks, what caves are on your must-see list? Can I also say, Cheesesteak, I've seen your name everywhere. Um, and the same with all my Patreons. Like, I know your name, I'm learning your names and it, it's beautiful. Um, I've, I really feel connected to you. Uh, what caves are on your must-see list? Every single one. I want to see, I, I, I know, I know, I know, it sounds silly. I just want to see every cave there is and some of these cave systems are really scary and i'm going to have to take my time in getting to them um, because either they're across the world or they really have horrible heights i'm really scared of heights so or tight squeezes all these things i will um, try to uh, overcome my fears to get into one day <laughs> okay moving on um so I asked YouTube and Instagram as well. Uh, sorry if I pronounce your Instagram names wrong again, but Jay Wood Star asks, have you ever got stuck whilst caving? Yeah, all the time. Um, <laughs> um, a lot of comments I see, they're like, what if you get stuck? And it's like, I know, because I've been stuck a lot. Um, and it's very normal to get stuck underground. Uh, in small spaces. It's how you deal with it. And mostly you'll be stuck for a minute. Sometimes you'll be stuck for five minutes and that's where it gets really annoying. But especially in where I am, uh, a lot of the caves have mud in and a lot of water. So you'll find you're just like, <laughs> I hate doing this, but you'll just slip right through. Why do I have to do it like, no, oh. You'll just slip right through the cave. It's just like a, it, you're just a slippery boy. Um, <laughs> to get a little bit more serious, it is very normal to be stuck and I've been stuck a lot. And uh, I find that mostly when you're at awkward angles, you'll get stuck. Um, I've been stuck with my hips in between the rocks. That's kind of a kicker there. It's really annoying. Um, to have your hips stuck because that's where your center of gravity is. So you'll be, f normally when your hips get stuck, you'll be fighting the center of gravity as well. I found that I've been on my side, I know this is kind of awkward to represent, but I've been on my side and have, I've had my right hip stuck in between uh, rock quite a lot. In fact, there was this, there's this thing in, in this cave called the eye hole, which is shaped like this. So you're kind of at the bottom where the smallest bit is uh, fighting gravity to get into the middle where the big bit is and uh, once my hip got stuck in there and uh, I think it took me I mean it feels a lot longer but um, it, it was probably around three to five minutes and and that that is it's like planking it's like when when you plank time is so much longer and it you know it's been a minute but it feels like 10 uh, but yeah um, very common to be stuck um, and you'll be unstuck within a matter of minutes and everything's fine again. Especially with the help of your friends. <laughs> David.logr asks, How are you so darn cute? It... <laughs> it comes naturally. I was going to play it off that it comes naturally. I don't know. I, I don't know. Thank you. Stop. You make me blush. Okay, right. E Enormi, uh, Enormi asks, how did you get started with caving? I got started with caving at my local university um, in Sheffield uh, when I started university about six years ago now. And I was in a really, really bad spot, if I'm being honest. And I wanted to do something that not only my friends would be like, why have you done that? That's not you at all. I wanted to prove to myself that I could be completely different from what I was. 
Um, I, I grew up in a town where there was no caves and I wanted to stay at home all the time and be at home and play video games and never, I was scared of the outside world, I, I never wanted to set foot out there. So when I got into a bad spot I decided that I would do something I never really wanted to do and that was caving and I hated the first few trips, really hated them. But I found that my life improved a lot because not only did I have to work through a lot of uh, anxiety because I hated being underground. What I found was that overground became less of a scary world to be in um, and then I had to start improving my communication skills and I had to try and make more friends and that was very tricky for me at the time I think. So it, it really did make me a more responsible person and um, you can't just go underground willy-nilly you have to be quite responsible and uh, look after the people around you as well as yourself so um, it did it, it really did help me and that's why I kept going with it even though you didn't ask that I answered it anyway. M Hudson 0.90120 uh, asks how did it all start? How did it all start? Well, I was... It was a hot summer evening in ancient Rome. You're probably talking about caving, right? Um, and how I started caving, or maybe part of my journey, or how I ended up here, or why I'm British. Um, it probably, for me, started long before I knew it did. So, uh, uh, as I said, I grew up in a town where there were no caves. We were a flat, chalky land. And there was, I grew up in a town quite as, like, I don't want to say it's small, but it, it it's, un, it's an unnoticed town. Um, and not much happens there. And you can get bored quite easily, in my own opinion. Um, when I was very young, I think around from the age of seven, I had nightmares quite often about, well, I don't know if they were nightmares, but they were about being in very, very small spaces, incredibly small spaces. Um, and it felt like I was a mouse um, going in. I, I felt, I felt I was, I dreamt this dream quite a lot where I was a mouse and I would go under in very small holes underneath houses. Um, and then also growing up, I have been obsessed since I was, again, around the age of eight with Lara Croft. I have been obsessed with Lara Croft for a long time and a lot of my inspiration in my life comes from her, um, even though she's just a fake character. There was a lot in Lara Croft that I could see was very exceptional. Her love of history. The fact that she was living alone in a mansion, she didn't need a man or, you know, anyone else to go on these missions. She could go on her own. I really enjoyed Indiana Jones. I remember watching that over and over and over again. Um, again, I loved the idea. I didn't really see, like, gender, but it, it did help that Lara Croft was a woman and I was also, you know, I, I, did, I identify as a woman as well. So that helped. Um, but Indiana Jones was something special too, um, because it was adventure and I lived in a town where there wasn't adventure really, so that was really special to me and I think it started then. Sam Lamin Lepre asks, again I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your Instagram handles, are you going to some more vertical cave in the future? In many caves in the UK, you use rope to go down really big, big shafts and they'll be up to, I mean, the biggest shaft in the UK is 170, roughly 170 metres tall, which is roughly the si same size as Blackpool Tower. Um, so vertical caving is definitely a thing that you can do. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of cavers have been watching my channel thinking, you know, where is the vertical cave? Um, people that know me um, know exactly why there's no vertical cave. I'm scared of heights. I am, I am terrified of heights. And the irony is, is that people look at my YouTube videos and think, oh my God, that's so scary. I would never go caving. You're, you know, you're going to die with doing these small holes. That's the easy bit. <laughs> easy bit. Um, being in very small spaces is normally incredibly safe, 
being at height when there's 70 meters plus and you're dangling in the air scares me so much and um, it's something I've been trying to get over and I'm trying to do more vertical um, bits of cave but it is really difficult for me because whilst people are like wow I would do that these great huge big spaces and you can dangle in midair and every, everyone seems to really be attracted to that that scares me the most and I will have genuine anxiety attacks and panic attacks around that so I need to be really careful around my mental health when I go into those those sections of caves and I need to do that one bit at a time. There's also the thing that that's a really big space to light up and I don't actually have the money to buy these huge expensive lights to light up a big piece of cave. So doing these really small spaces is really good for me right now because number one, it looks hor horrifying and dangerous but it's actually really, really safe. Number two, I, I just need one light bulb to light everything up and it's beautiful and clear as day and it's perfect. With bigger chambers you have such a big problem with buying all these lights um, and uh, that's something I can't do right now. How to do, um, Boaz98 asks a really really good question, how to do caving if you've got a few extra pounds? Um, so. Um, you don't have to be slim to go caving. Uh, on my channel, I go into lots of very small spaces because I enjoy that. You never have to do that. Um, a lot of the larger cavers tend to do the bigger spaces, the wide open spaces, the prettier, just by happenstance, the prettier spaces. And they'll go down these massive, massive drops and everything is beautiful and wonderful. And honestly, um, caving is just as good um, when you're on the larger side. In fact, in a group, I always like to have um, someone who's bigger than me because if, especially in small spaces, um, you'll be the handy person. Because if you're ever doing small spaces, if you feel at any point that you can't get through a small space, the whole group will probably turn back because it's a good indicator that that's not the way to go on. Um, and also, if you can get through a small space, everyone else in the group is like, oh right, okay, I'm smaller than this person, um, so I'll be able to do that, which is, um, I'm, you're, you're the useful person in the group, believe me. <laughs> Geek Films asks, you're great at presenting. Thank you, that means a lot. If you could present a show about anything, what would it be? Oh, well, thank you for asking that question and thank you for saying that I am a good presenter. Um, the reason that I've actually set up this YouTube channel is because I want to be a television presenter and I will be a tele television presenter and I am manifesting this and I am a television presenter. I'm just practicing right now on YouTube and I have so many ideas for television shows, it's unreal. I've applied to a lot of companies and none of them seem particularly interested. So um, what I decided to do was say, heck it, because I can't swear on YouTube, heck it. I am going to make everything that I want to make for television on YouTube instead. And particularly, so I, gra I graduated and then the Tom Scott opportunity came up like about a couple of weeks after I graduated and then I was like do you know what this is my time to shine what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start up this YouTube channel again I've been doing YouTube since I was about 13 um, I'm now almost oh no I won't say, I won't say my age just yet <laughs> so I've been doing YouTube a long time but then after the Tom Scott opportunity I felt it was a really really good time for me you know I've just graduated just get a really really small job and then I really want to work on YouTube um, really honing down on my craft becoming a television presenter so I see YouTube as a journey and I, what, what I wanted my viewers to to see was me slowly improving. I want you to see me improving with my confidence and me opening up a little bit more. And I want, I want you to see just me incrementally getting better at what I do. And then one day for me, I want to look back on every YouTube video I've made, including this one, and just be amazed at how far I've come because that is 
that's the goal. I, I've got so many television ideas. I don't want to actually say any of them because then, then you'll know and I want it to be a surprise, you know? <laughs> so I asked YouTube as well. I, I asked three uh, social medias, Patreon, Instagram and YouTube. And we're on the final one. Mike Wood asks, have you ever had a headlamp or torch fail on you at the worst time? If so, what was plan B? This is a brilliant question because Cave is actually bringing uh, two lights for every person. So every person should at least have two lights on them in case one does fail for whatever reason. Or maybe you drop it down a, a ravine or a, 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 heaven forbid, down a big drop and you just can't get it back. However, I have actually had a light fail on me and this was only two weeks ago and I was with a mate and we, we just wandered into um, a 10 minute walk into a system that I know very well. And I thought, yeah, it's just 10 minutes in, it'll be fine. Um, and we, we arranged all the backup plans and everything if something went wrong. The only thing was that we forgot to bring a light. So we borrowed a light off a pal and it was a really amazing light, a really, really bright light. And then suddenly it went off. <sighs> so we were uh, then in pitch black. And here's the thing about this system in particular. I was very aware that if this light went off, I'd be able to make it out on my own because I know it that well. And um, I do like doing this challenge where you just turn all the lights off and try and make it out in pitch black. Um, which I wouldn't suggest doing because it's really dangerous. You have to know the system first and I, I only make it like 10 minutes in from the beginning of the entrance so that's just 10 minutes of walking really. Um, plan B, if, you, if that happens there really isn't a plan B. Um, you make your way out as best you can um, and at that point in time, we'd both had our phones because we were filming. So we both had our phones. We we just used our phone lights and it was fine. Um, so there you go. We did actually have backup lights. We weren't that dumb. Um, but it does happen to cavers. And um, you, you, you just, you just uh, try and make your way out. Unless there are big drops, then you don't make your way out because you don't want to accidentally go down a big drop. John Cress asks, hi Elise, have you, hi, have you done much caving in the United States? And if so, how was it? No, I have not. I have never gone caving outside of my own country. No, that's not true. I went caving in South Korea. Um, I lived in South Korea for a year. So um, I actually got into National Geographic South Korea uh, for a magazine uh, for National Geographic. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, I met a lot of contacts over there. I really actually do miss the cavers over there. Um, but I, I went off of social media completely, so we lost contact. Swedex asks, what do you wish you had known the first time you went caving? How cold it was gonna be. Um, that I shouldn't wear a really thin, like I was wearing these sport leggings that were really thin for my first trip and that was a bad idea because I needed to wear thermals, um, especially when it was snowing. So I took my first trip in the thick snow and the water was cold and um, I've, I don't think I've ever been that cold before. Um, that was a bit scary actually. Yeah, warm clothing, thermals. Thermals are your friend, just wear thermals. Uh, Milk Official. By the way, Milk Official, I've actually been noticing your comments quite a lot and um, thank you. I, I do, I, I, I know I keep saying this, but I do recognise your names now and it's really sweet seeing you guys. How long did it take for you to become good at your level of caving? I love how you put good and then slash at your level in case I wasn't good at caving. <laughs> I've done this for roughly five years, six years on and off. Um, I have periods where I don't go caving because it's too cold. Um, so, I, so yeah, uh, I don't want to say that there's like a good and bad at caving. I don't think that's I don't think that's how it works. Um, 
I understand where you're coming from. There's always, you can always spot a skilled caver. They'll run through the cave like it's nothing. And you think, oh my God, you're powered, you're powered by cave fairy dust. How, how on earth are you so godly? Um, I am not one of those people, at least yet, but I don't think there's a rotor of you're good at caving and you're bad at caving. It's it's just caving and, and it's, very, it's a very accessible kind of sport because everyone is equally as terrified in the beginning. Um, so I think, I think caving is just about accepting your fear in something. Um, and I think a good caver is just supportive of the people that they're around and they're just, they're just loving of um, the environment and respectful of, of everyone who's on the trip. So to be a good caver, in a sen essentially, um, all it takes is 10 minutes. All it takes is five minutes to be a good caver because all it takes is a helping hand. All it takes is supportiveness and, and friendship and love. Um, so there's your answer. David Seal, another name I know quite well. David Seal asks, which do you prefer to explore, caves or mines? Out of which, out of the two, which is more dangerous to explore? I prefer caves to mines. The reason is, is linked to your second question. It's because mines are, in my eyes, they're so dangerous. Um, I mean, you look at the hazards for a cave, it's like, okay, flooding, how do you prevent not being in a cave when it floods. Well, you can look at the weather, you can look at the cave's history. With mines, oh my gosh, the, the never-ending list of things that could happen in mines that are so out of your control is terrifying. You've got bad gas, you've got um, falling, falling in, um, posts that are holding up the walls um, so you can still prevent uh, like dangers from happening in mines that's sure i mean there are really safe mines out there but a lot there are there are just so many unsafe mines that it's you you risk a lot and and the thing is is that uh, my boyfriend currently loves mines and if you don't if you don't know him check him out he's got his own channel um, which I'm, I'm really proud of him. Um, the thing is, he, he will say, well, that's the point. You know, mines are a bit dangerous. They're a bit scary. There are ghosts. There are ghosts. And it's like, do you want to trifle with that? Of course you do, because that's the point. And for me, I'm just, I'm a cave woman at heart. I'm, um, mines are great, but yeah. Luce, Luca, Luca Smith asks, have you ever had a panic attack whilst caving and how did you deal with it? What's your mental strategy to remain calm when you're doing seemingly dangerous things? Thank you for saying seemingly dangerous because <clears throat> a lot of things aren't dangerous when they seem to be. And that's, isn't that anxiety in a nutshell? You think you're gonna die, you think this is it and you think about the worst thing that could happen. You look back on it and realize, Actually, that was absolutely fine and nothing happened. Um, I've had lots of panic attacks whilst being underground and it's really normal to have panic attacks when being underground for, not for everyone, I don't, I've known people that just don't, but um, I tend to get very panicky about everything and that's why I go caving, it's to deal with my anxiety. The first time I had a panic attack, I just, um, I, I just blacked out actually <laughs> and I don't I think I might have fainted I can't I, I just the people I was with their voices I stopped understanding them and um, everything kind of my breathing got really heavy um, and everything went faint and my body went very limp actually just thinking about it it's yeah flashbacks um, <clears throat> how did I deal with that I looked at my breath That's the only thing you have when you are in that situation. You have your breath and the present moment. Honestly, you don't even have the people that you're with. If you get really, really bad, if you get really intensely bad, um, 
The people that you're with can help you out to some degree, but you're the only one that can get you out of that situation. And you have to believe in yourself. You have to take courage and think, I got myself in here and I'm going to get myself out no matter what. Now, people that are with you can help. They can say the right things at the right times. The last time I had a panic attack, a guy with me said, it's all right, we'll leave the cave now. You did, you did great. You did amazingly well. And that was just what I needed to hear at the time. I just needed to leave. However, sometimes it gets so bad that the, no matter what somebody's saying to you, you don't hear it because your mind is in shutdown. And I've seen other people go through this and there's literally nothing you can say. Just, you just got to give them space and let them breathe. Don't say anything. It's just going to make it worse, uh, especially if it's a newcomer. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd say. Notice, notice your breath, notice your breathing, be in the present moment and wait until you calm down. Okay. So Kay asks, hi Elise, your book is cool. Have you ever been to Paris quarries? Hit us up if you're curious about spelunking in France someday. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what brand of light are you using? Oh, thank you for inviting me. That's sweet. I've never been to Paris itself, so uh, no. Um, what brand of light am I using? I'm using a Phoenix. Phoenix, I love you so much. But the thing is, is that I've currently lost it and I am in a big sad right now because where is my light? Where have you gone? Please come back to me. I'm calling your name. <laughs> I think it's meant to say specular, but with a five at the front. Will you visit New Zealand? Um, I would love to visit New Zealand. And I can see that happening in around five to 10 years time, because right now all I'm doing is working to pay my rent. So I don't make money to go to these kinds of countries. Um, so it would be nice. I can see myself doing that one day, going to New Zealand. Um, because let's face it, you have such a beautiful country, um, but not right now. Bad Gaming asks, did Santa bring you a new microphone? Yes, thank you so much. Um, can you see it? I don't even, like, it's here. You can't, you can barely see it. Look, it's so cool. Um, thank you. I, I got this because my patrons supported me and Honest, I, I, I just, I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss for words. Thank you so much for supporting me. Um, it means that I can get this stuff and it means that that can be, that can make my videos a lot better. All right, last one. Last one, we'll do it. Uh, Thomas YT asks, what is your profession? I don't have one. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so I would say that I am a television personality or I am a television presenter and I am an actress. I am a writer and I am a producer. I am a go-getter and in my spare time, in my spare time, I have a small job to earn money for my rent. Other than that, I'm, I just want to do everything. That's my profession. I don't see myself as, as one thing. I, I just want to do so, so much um, in this world. And I've, I feel like I've got a huge message to give. And my message is don't let anxiety stop you from doing something insane, something crazy. You know, you, 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 you scare, you, you look at me and say, I'm crazy and insane for going in these small holes when I feel anxious about it. But what's holding you back, you know? So you might have a, a presentation and you're scared and you're anxious about it, but really, I, it feels so scary at the time, but really nothing can go wrong. As long as you, you're prepared and you take every single precaution under control and you, you know what you're doing, nothing can go wrong okay so that's my message to the world is that i want to get across is that anxiety of course you're gonna have it and that's normal and that's exactly how you should feel when you're underground in a scary hole or you're doing a presentation or you're about to do something that that feels like maybe you're gonna quit your job or maybe you're gonna try and get a new one 
anything that's happening in your life, anxiety will follow you. Uh, or maybe it doesn't for you and that's okay, but that's part of life and that's okay and that's good and that's what makes us keep going. So, <sighs> yeah, I went on a tangent there. I think if you guys have learned anything is that I'm very uh, tangential, so. All right, it's time to wrap up because... Uh, I think I've answered as many questions as I can. Sorry if I didn't get around to yours. Some of the questions overlapped. Um, I really enjoyed getting to know you guys. It was really, it was a lot of fun. And I normally keep myself really, um, I normally keep myself really undercover and I'm very scared about saying my own opinion on things uh, because uh, that's how you get into trouble. That's how people, you know, um, being vulnerable is a very scary position to be in. But I'm very happy that I did this. And I want to take note that everything I've said today is true as of 20, the first, at the moment it's the 1st of January 2022. Uh, so happy new year. Um, and things might have changed. I might, uh, if you're looking back and it's five years later or 10 years later, I may have changed a lot. Um, but this is what I think right now, and that's for the record. So thank you very much for watching, and I really hope that you enjoy my new content coming up. Here's to a delicious and successful 2022. <laughs>